So a little bit about me is that I will stop anything to watch the World Cup. I think the Olympics are one of the most inspiring things on our planet, and the Stanley Cup playoffs is probably one of my favorite times of the year. <laughs> we all love sports so much. We have traditions and experiences that we have to do when we watch them. I mean, my Canadian family can vividly recite the plays and feelings that went on in Vancouver 2012 when Canada took gold in hockey. And there were some feelings this most re recent Olympics, but it's fine. <laughs> Um, and even if you don't watch the Seahawks, you know that Seattle is the 12th man. We all treasure sports so much that we have hundreds, hundreds of films dedicated to depicting the camaraderie of a team coming together. We have such an adoration for sports that we almost love them unconditionally. And whenever there's a highly publicized event or even figure, scandals are just bound to follow it. The Olympics have scandals, the World Cup has scandals, and so does the Super Bowl. They can range from anything from civil rights issues, sex scandals, bribery, cheating, and so much more. The fans can get involved with wild mobs getting way out of hand and fighting and gambling. There's so much good and bad going on, and we can be pulled our attention in so many different directions because there is so much good and bad happening. And one of the biggest crimes that goes unnoticed is human trafficking. However, human trafficking is just the beginning of identifying this problem. It is just one component of this development of the historical slavery that we know. People of color in America still suffer from the racism that was built into our institutions. How it targeted, dehumanized, and abused a culture. And it is such a severe, important, historical issue in America, and nothing will erase that. It is also important to understand that this historical issue is not only in America, it is all around the world. And much like the scars of our history and the subject, subjugation of our minority groups, this issue, this act of slavery, still exists. It's still alive. I am using my privilege as a white woman to talk about this issue that has been given this space. I am acknowledging this because I know that this could have been given to a person of color to talk about this historical scar that has evolved into our modern world. This injustice, objectification, abuse, death, and dehumanization has, that has evolved into our modern world has been identified by the UN international, US, and local advocacy groups as slavery. So that is why for the rest of this time, I am using that language, slavery and slaves, to address this developed issue that has evolved into the globalized modern slavery. These advocacy groups define slavery as the use of lies or violence to force another human being into labor for little or no pay. Human and sex trafficking is a characterization of that. It is owning a person and trading them and transporting them across areas as goods for slavery. And unlike prostitution, sex slavery and sex trafficking is owning a person and forcing them into sexual exploitation. Children, men, and women can be involved in every single form of slavery. Today, we know that we have deinstitutionalized slavery, but it still exists. It is everywhere, and now it hides behind those institutions. It hides in some of our most profitable events, including the sporting events we know and love. And it hides in one of my favorites. <laughs> And it's the World Cup. The slavery is bound to follow this because of the mass publicization with the mass constructions who support the mass of fans. It brings a whole new meaning to if you build it, they will come. And you may have heard of this issue in 2015 when FIFA, the organizers of the World Cup, awarded it to Qatar for 2022. 
It has caused a lot of outrage for many reasons. One of them being the fact that these games are usually played in the summer, and that would be impossible given that Qatar's average summer temperatures average is 113 degrees. Qatar overshadowing all this is Qatar's blatant disregard for human rights guidelines that were set out by FIFA. Qatar is advertising migrant work that is turning into slavery. I mean, what would you do? Just imagine if your friend came up to you and just said, you want more money? Well, do the math. It'll take a couple months of that new wage to pay off that finder's fee to your boss and that plane ticket. So new adventure, here we come. And you arrive at your first day of work and every single hope is shattered. That finder's fee doesn't cost a couple months to pay off, it takes years. You are being abused and sleep deprived and you can't escape because your boss took your passport. This is slavery. Slavery is building the stadiums for the Qatar World Cup in 2022. These people are working in, in those 113 degree summers and dying of heat exhaustion. The Guardian reported that 12 people will die every week leading up to the World Cup for a total of 4,000 dying before a single ball is kicked on a pitch. One of the most profitable events of our world is using slave labor. Slaves are building the stadiums and no matter what, the fans will come. This is not the only world event that uses, that takes advantage of vulnerable people. During the Sochi Olympics, Time reported that migrant workers were working 12-hour days for little to no pay. And when they questioned their living or wages, they were deported or abused. BBC and several others reported that 500 companies that participated in the Olympics withheld over $8 million to their migrant workers. Companies are getting richer as people are getting abused. The Olympics caused governments to relocate neglected and minority groups. They do this so the area looks presentable. These families are put at increased risk because they're just trying to find work to make ends meet. So they're put at increased risk of human and sex trafficking. This happened notably in Sydney, Vancouver, and Beijing and several other areas. This puts vulnerable people at impossible odds to escape. When these issues affect the Western world, many of us try and push it away and say, it isn't a part of us, it's not our problem. And I get it, you don't want to be reminded of these horrible, evil acts when you're watching something that you love. And you know what? I don't want to either. <laughs> I hate that there are 40 million slaves on our planet, two million of them are children. It is one of the most profitable crimes in our world and Seattle, just south of us, is one of the top 10 cities in the US for reports of sex trafficking. I hate that this is going on in the world, but it's the truth. Slavery exists and it's everywhere. It's even at our Super Bowl. U.S. and local news continuously report on the connections between sex slavery and the Super Bowl. Even athletes are found with victims of sex trafficking. We are continuously being told about this event, about these issues, and yet we don't want to address them. It's literally on our blind side and we have no linebacker to defend us. We look to the host city for the, these correlations, and that just isn't the fact. In Las Vegas, a victim of sex trafficking commented on the fact that with the rise of these popular major sporting events, there is a rise in gambling, and with that, a rise in sex slavery. Police have to identify victims by if they look underage or have been beaten. Police have to identify the difference between prostitution and sex slavery. One athlete mentioned that he saw a woman in the back seat of his friend's car. And his response to this situation was, the less I know, the better. He 
said he was unsure of this situation, and yet he did nothing. Let's not have that happen again. We need to be able to address the issue of human and sex trafficking if it was in our back seat. Slavery is a supply and demand business. It follows where the money is. It costs a lot of money to be at these events, and slave owners and traffickers know that. They are at March Madness, World Series, World Juniors, Euro Cup, and Indy 500, and all across the world. They do this because they know our attention is looking the other way. 40 million slaves are on our planet. By consuming these events, we are contributing to the problem. And if you don't want to be reminded of this problem, then stop the problem. Boycotting your favorite sporting event is not going to stop it. Ignoring this issue is just going to continue it. We can't push this issue aside because we want to think about something else. That is exactly what these slave owners and traffickers expect us to do. We are doing the same play over and over again, and the other team knows our plays. We are being outmatched and outplayed. This is our time to take a knee. This is our time to form a huddle. This is our halftime pep talk. We need to continue to raise awareness to stop the problem. So raise awareness in your communities and around your world. And donate to the lawyers and aftercare specialists that are working to set people free and keep them free. And you have to fight the legislation so that we can stop human trafficking, so that we can fight the legislation to make harder laws against human and sex trafficking and make sure that legislation follows those laws. International Justice Mission said that we can set people free, but we also need to arrest the evil forces that tried to own them so that we can keep people free. We need to fight back. We need to be able to talk about this issue and address it. We need to make this not connected with our favorite sporting events. We don't want human and sex trafficking to be associated with it. We need to fight until all are free because we need to hold our favorite sporting events and our world to a higher standard. Thank you.